Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker. Another World was created by the legendary duo Averna Phillips and William J. Bell. It premiered on May 4th, 1969 and lasted for 35 years before going off the air on June 25th, 1999. Set in the fictional town of Bay City, Bay City the city, the series originally opened with announcer Bill Wolf intoning its epigram, we do not live in the world alone, but in a thousand other worlds, which Ernest said represented the difference between the world of events we live in and the world of feelings and dreams that we strive for. Another world focused less on the conventional drama of domestic life as seen in other soap operas and more on exotic melodrama between families of different classes and philosophies. The show featured an incredible list of famous faces who spent time early in their careers in Bay City, including Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman, Anne Haish, Ray Liotta, Kira Sedgwick, Marsha Cross, Lindsay Lohan, Billy Porter, to name just a few of the famous faces and this great cast of actors I am lucky to have with me here today. Please welcome to the locker room, Joseph Barbara, Timothy Gibbs, Allison McConnell Page, Mark Mortimer, and Dahlia Salam. And let's hope Diego Serrano. <laughs> Dahlia, Joe, Hi. Allison, Hi. Mark, and hey, hey. Tim. Hey, everybody. Hey. Hi, Hi. guys. <laughs> we, were, we were all talking about Billy Porter before. Dahlia remembers him being on the show. What do you remember yeah. about Billy? Well, I remember, you know, as everyone remembers, Sophia Carlino uh, worked in her uh, brother's restaurant, Carlino's. <laughs> and Billy Porter had a band. He was a recurring character on the show. He played a character, Billy Rush, I believe. Alan just told me, luckily, I think it's Rush, Billy Rush. And he was the lead singer of the of this jazz band, I think. And he played, I think, during somebody's wedding or somebody's party in Carlino's, yeah. you know. But one of, one of our fans will probably remember. I'm maybe, told. yeah, I'm sure. The, but he was, he was nice. Wedding. He was so, he was so nice. So I just, I have that great memory and I have a photo somewhere with him and I wish I remembered to uh, bring it up, but. Well, if you get it, share, share it. I'll share it on social media for fans to see if you find for it. Sure. So, cool. so let's go, let's go back in time. Uh, what do you remember about, you, you know, finding out about this audition, your screen test, Mark, if you want to start. Oh, it was a train wreck. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a train wreck. I can't believe they gave me a job. Um, I, was, I was so nervous. Uh, but I, 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 I remember, like, do I kiss her or how do I kiss her? No one told me how to kiss on TV. I had no idea. And uh, who, who did was, you have a screen? T who did you have that with? Dahlia, wasn't it you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, great, great. <laughs> I hope so. like, Come on, man! You don't remember I that? Mean, of course, I remember. I was, it was she, me. She remembered it. Yeah. Yeah, I remember um, you very well. Yeah. We were fighting yeah. over you. We were fighting over you on that. Show. <laughs> well, the first, the first day, remember, I couldn't say my lines. I was so nervous. Yeah. And, and, the, and the director's like, "Mark, you actually have to say your lines. You know that, right?" And I'm like, "Oh my god, I'm going to fail so miserably at this." That so was just the first audience. day, though, right, Mark? That was just a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> and a second and a third. <laughs> then I kind of got used to it. <laughs> it was, did it was you think Mark was going to be the one to get the role? Well, you know, he had he had a uh, you know he had a real uh, genuine quality. He was very natural, I felt, and very warm. Um, he was nervous, but that I think it played into the chemistry of these two characters um, in the beginning. So he had. You know, he loosened up. He was nervous, but he got it. He got it. He had, he had a stronger Chicago accent, that's for sure, during during that yeah. time. He had yeah, they hired a coach for me just to get rid of it. Did they really? I forgot yeah. that. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, who was the casting director when you joined? Was it uh, Jimmy Bohr? It was Jimmy Bohr. Yeah. He was amazing. He was I can't great. believe you remember all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, can't. I was just going to say, I was going to have to defer. <laughs> well, let's let's go to you, Tim. What do you remember about finding out about this role and your your screen test or audition? You know, I remember um, I, I had uh, well, I'd come up for another uh, audition on this on the same show uh, some months earlier, and it 
it uh, it went well. It was a screen test that it went very well, and we thought, well, it was going to work out, and and it didn't. So uh, I was really, I was I was I was bummed out when that happened. And of course, um, they said to me, someone there said, I don't remember who it was. I remember the stage manager, Dennis. Uh, looked at me after that screen test. He said, pack your bags, you're coming back. And of course, I didn't come back. And when I when I did finally get invited back for, for another test and I got a role, uh, the first thing I did was was find Dennis and said, boy, you're, you're lucky that worked out because you were on my, my S list. But uh, yeah, I remember, I was nervous. I was, I was always nervous, you know. Do you remember who you screen tested with? Um, yes, I screen tested with Amy, with Amy Carlson. Oh, Amy Carlson, great. Uh, yeah. here, here's your coach. Tim, I just, sorry. Uh, yeah, you did uh, uh, <laughs> You did uh, 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 Hi, Diego. Hi, Diego. I, I literally, I'm, I wrote down at 3 p.m., <laughs> and I didn't realize it was Eastern time. So Alan just wrote me. He's like, are you joining? And I was like, oh, my God. So I just literally pulled over. What's up, guys? <laughs> Some things never change. I know, right? <laughs> <Hey>! <laughs> Look at this. Um, nice so I wanted to go to you because you were sort of making smirking a little while Tim was telling this story. Do you remember something about that time? Well, well, I remember one thing. Yeah, but the first thing I was smirking at was the fact that he actually – Put at the bottom of his, uh, his yeah. screen, Abba the guy. So yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> that is name, which which has another story to it, but we won't get into it at the moment. Um, but that's okay. what made me left out laughing, actually. Um, I, I believe, Tim, I could be wrong. I believe we both auditioned for Joe McConnell. And, yeah, yes. And that's they it. and they loved you. Um and created Gary so they could bring you on the show. Is that that's, not correct? That, I, I believe you're right about that. I think that's what happened. And, uh, and, and then Joe McConnell, um, after I screen tested, became Joe Carlino. Oh. Right. And oh, by wow. the way, I want to say something about that. The food at Carlino's was always cold. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to somebody about that, Tim. Sorry about that, man. Well, I've always wanted to just, I just wanted to say that. I, I don't think I ever got a warm plate. Let me ask you a question. Should we, should we do this from, should we do this thing from Carlino's? Oh man. Could we do, I would love it. We I'd should. Let's God. get you know what? Carlino's was a character I, in the I, show. I actually, was... funny, I actually don't live that far from Carlino's. So hold on. Nice. No way. <laughs> what are you gonna do? No, it's, it's very close. It's very close. Um, it's it's close to my. Uh, oh, it's very close. Uh -oh. Give me a second. Oh, I don't know if the internet connection works. Let's hope the internet connection still works. Hold on one second. Is anybody, is anybody, do you have props in the house? What's that? Where is Big that? house, Joe. Diego, oh, where are you see. driving to? Hold on. Let me see. There you go. Oh, yeah, in and out. I'm not oh, there it is. Oh, my <laughs> man. Here we go. Nice. That's so great. Man, that's, that's All right, hold when we, uh, oh, when we that's close awesome. the show down, uh, the prop guy said to me, hey, you want the sign? Oh, man, that's classic. That's so cool that you got so that. Cool. I've broken cool. it three times and had to pay to get it fixed, but <laughs> it's worth you know. it. Hey, Joe, oh, that's, cool. oh, that's not fair. I only got a T-shirt. Uh, I'll let you come over and look at the sign. I just got the Carlino shirt. <laughs> hey, hey, guys, you have, you have fans here today from Montreal, from Amsterdam. Oh, oh that's, so, cool. that's um, so great to hear. Diego, Wait, did you say you were on your way home? Diego, what are you doing? Yeah, what is happening? I was on my way home. Okay. How far I'm, are you from home? I'm doing Wait, Dahlia, were you at Staples? Yeah. Were you at Staples? I was at Staples. Day, when? Weeks ago? I, I'm at Staples oh God, all the time. Real. What do you mean? What? <laughs> I, I, I was, I, I drove by. So I moved back. I moved back into Studio City, into my house. I've been in yeah. renovation for the last year. It was supposed to be a small project. And I don't know if you guys know this. I, you know, I've been buying real estate since I was on the soap. I mean, I bought my yeah. first apartment in New York when I was 19 years old. I still have it. 
And wow. Then, I remember oh, that man. place. I remember that. Yeah, and then I bought another apartment. Then I came out here when I went to do that show, Time of Your Life. I bought a house in Studio City, and I held on to it. And then I worked, and I just basically started inquiring real estate with the money that I made acting, and I never sold them. So, oh, wow. That's kind of been, that's kind of been allowed me to do whatever I want to do. and just so, Anyway, to answer your question, I was, uh, I was renovating my house during the whole pandemic. It was supposed to be a two-month project, and I ended up just gutting the whole thing. And I just moved. I was going to rent it out, and I ended up just moving into it about three months ago. Um, I love it. And so I went to Staples. I drove by, and I was like, because, you know, the whole mask thing is so hard to see people. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> is that Sophia? Carlino? Is that Carlino? I almost said something. And then some you should have come up to me. me. That's oh, crazy. No, was honking at me. So I just kept going like, that's crazy because Allison has so knows somebody that knows you too, right? Yeah. So I live in Mammoth, Diego. Oh, he just froze. Oh, okay. I live at, I live in Mammoth, and it, it turns out you know Christy, Christy, and you were just at Dos Alice, your like her sister. Anyway, so we have our our, our brother. Anyway, I can't believe you were here, and I didn't see you in my small town. <laughs> I don't know if he can hear us so well in the car. Nice to see all you guys. Good to see you, D. Yeah, D. I can hear you guys. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, That's the SC. Diego, while you're while you're speaking and we have good signal, what what do you remember about finding out about the character of the character of auditioning or screen test? I don't think you're. Dahlia, you, know, you take it away. So talk about else. Sophia. Um, I posted something on Facebook the other day. Oh. Yeah, he can't. He's in now. Diego, you gotta, yeah. you gotta put, you gotta pull him over. Yeah, he, he is. <laughs> so, um, Dahlia, tell us about finding out about the role of Sophia and your. So yeah, Sophia. I, what I remember about that was being in the waiting room, and the first person I saw was Joe, actually. I didn't screen test with him. I screen tested right. with the first Nick, Kevin McClatchy, who I thought was going to be here today. He couldn't. Um, but I screen tested with, with Kevin McClatchy. But I remember being really nervous. I was in the waiting room just with, you know, five other gals. We all were, you know, we all kind of looked Italian because we had to be Joe's sister. And um, I remember, Joe, you peeked your head in. Do you? Do you remember that? I don't know, but kind of. I, I, I remember I have a, you that. I have day. memory yeah. like an ox, so I yeah. can hold on to that kind of stuff. And um, anyway, after that, uh, I, I just remember Joe was like, "Good luck, guys," or "Break a leg," or something. And I just, he was so warm, and I just felt, my gosh, you know, I'm just gonna just have so much fun. As nervous as I am, I don't care. I'm just gonna go for this, and I uh, remember I worked with Nick and uh, sorry, Nick. Kevin playing Nick and we we had a great chemistry, Kevin McClatchy and I, right away. I mean, it was very easy. He was so generous as an actor. Um, uh, the director, his name is slipping my mind, but he was he was um, he was like the main. He was like the one that was there the longest. Do you guys Abba, remember? Abba. Not Ivan. The other Gary. Gary? Was it Gary? Gary? Not Gary Donatelli, the older gentleman. Oh, oh, oh I remember him with the gray Bob hair. Bob 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 was great. Bob was great. Was great. <laughs> Bob was great. So he was even, I remember he was telling me, oh my God, just go for it and, you know, improvise a little bit. He was amazing. You know, we, we went off the page. We weren't so, you know, on the line and we really had fun. And I found out two days later and it, it, the rest is, you know, it was a great time after that and, and working with Joe and everybody, you know, it was, it was a really happy, happy time for me. So that was my day. Yeah. That's all. Awesome. Joe. And for you talk about, I know you did the last time, but a lot of people That's might good. not have. Um, yeah, no, you know, the, the thing about the audition process that, that stuck out with me, the, the first time I went in, um, it was just for Tara Rubin. Um, and then, and then it was Tara and then I got called back and it was Tara and Jeff, uh, Jeff Johnson, who was the other casting director. And then it was Tara, Jeff Johnson and, and the executive producer who was Terry Guanari, I believe. And so oh, I, yeah, Terry. and then I got called back and then there was the third, the, the fourth audition was the screen test. And the day before that happened, Terry was fired 
And a new executive producer came on. I'm like, oh, great. Because now the person who apparently signed off on me three times is totally shy. <laughs> and I got to start all over again. And so that was like my impression of the, of the, um, of the screen test. Um, but the other weird thing was that it was Joe McConnell was the character that we were auditioning for. Um, and then I remember when I, when I got the call that I got the gig, um, they said, by the way, we're, did we tell you we're changing the name? I said, changing what name? Said, Your character's name going to be named Carlino. Um, and uh, that was just a shock. It, you know, uh, it was not the character that I, the uh, same character, but different name that I auditioned for. I wonder what, I wonder what prop, do you have any idea what prop did that suggest? You know, <laughs> like the ninth inning, they just changed the name. <laughs> I didn't think I played it that, you know, that Italian, but I guess maybe, I don't know. <laughs> That's so funny. And Allison, I know you were a recurring character, yeah. but you still had to go through the audition process. Yeah. Well, what was funny is I had had a screen test for General Hospital, and it was hilarious because a 16 year old ended up getting the part and I was like 23. <laughs> I was like 24 and I was like, we're up the, I mean, there was, she was with her mom anyway, but I kept on coming back to, it was Jimmy Bohr. And I, I mean, I think I auditioned for like four roles, the Laura Moss role, I can't remember. Kept on, we love you, we're gonna find something for you. And then he called me up and he said, we have a part for you. I hadn't even, Read, I mean, read for the part. They were like, we're just going to make it up for you. So it was really sweet. And I was still so nervous, but um, it was nice to have had, like, I think I saw, went in for four different parts. Um, a lot yeah. of different parts. Do you remember who you worked with on your first day? Oh, this was hilarious. So I had, Jimmy called me up and he said, I have, would you want to come in for this one little tiny thing? And I can't remember if it was with you, Mark or if it was with Kevin as Nick, but I was some like flu. It was probably more. I was some it was with me. Guitar. It was with me. It was with you. And yeah, then like me. three months later, I'm Emily and I'm a different character. And <laughs> so uh, my first, and then I think, so I just showed up. Oh, I will never forget this day. I showed up, I'm a nurse and somebody's in some full on car accident. And my first scene is I'm supposed to be giving internal heart paddles <laughs> for the body. And, and I, I went to Harvard and I'm like, I don't know if a nurse would be doing the internal paddles. Like, <laughs> doctor. And there was some nurse there saying telling me how to hold it. And, and there was I one of the actors had actually done a year of med school. And he's like, yeah, no, the nurse wouldn't be doing it, but you got it. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh my God, there's so much trauma. That was my it, first scene. It's so interesting that you say you, you, you were on there as a different character first. Many actors who I've done this show with have told me that. Yep. For any of you, did you have a small role on Another World before getting this? No, no, no so you all. No. Yeah. So you so you so, knocked it out of the park the first time. That's awesome. <laughs> D Diego, do you remember your audition or screen test? <laughs> no. <laughs> Diego. Oh yeah. Hold on. I can hear you guys, but I can't see you. <laughs> Diego, I, Diego, I want you to sell one of those houses and get a, a new mobile phone. <laughs> Yeah, you should be able to afford a, a mobile yeah. phone by now. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Upgrade the cell phone. Just an equity line. But but this is how Diego was at when he was working yeah, as no, nothing has changed. Yeah. 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 No, no. Diego, are you it's close the same. to home? Diego, are you Wait, close what? to your house? Are you home no, close not. to your house? Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what? This was like this was like uh, Diego playing Tomas, you know, in the in the ambulance it was going for <laughs> Dahlia just sent me a over sixty stat of of the of the scene where Diego like just decided oh, to, yes. remember he just yeah, said I know tripping. Yeah, Any Diego, do you remember? I, Alan, I, there's a c really funny scene that Diego was in, but I'll I'll tell him if he's able to hear us. Do, does okay. he remember the the tripping scene? At, they, I can they, hear they, you. You, I can you. you kept on tripping yeah. in our apartment, and then and then That's finally the I'm director said, "No, show. don't do that again, Diego." Don't do uh, that. Uh, we'll, we'll wait for the yeah. Yeah, we're gonna. 
We'll wait till he comes home. Yeah, yeah. I, he says he's far from home. Do they not pave yeah. the roads in that neighborhood? He's like, it's, <laughs> it's like a, like a steady hand that's gone wrong. What the hell? I'm it's not sure he's paid his. <laughs> I'm not sure he's paid his phone bill. Really, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's what. Um, so, do, do you guys all have a favorite story from your time in Bay City? Oh, got a lot of them. No, I have, a, I have, a, I have a good one. I have a good one. Should I go? Yeah, sure. go ahead. Good. Uh, I, it's funny, I, as I was saying that, I thought others were talking, so I didn't know you actually heard me say that. Uh, but I do have a good one. Uh, when Mark first came on the show, we we became pretty fast friends. And uh, yeah, I think a few days into it, he... <laughs> I don't know if it was that he just he wanted to do this to me or, you know, maybe he, he thought in his world, because Mark comes from a pretty tough background. You know, uh, he's had, uh, you know, serious experiences in, in the military and otherwise. And and uh, so he's he's a man where some others of us might be mice. And uh, so anyway, he says to me, do you want to spar with me? This is true, by the way. And and I, I said, uh, OK, sure. So we go up to the rehearsal room where we do morning rehearsals and he gives me a, a headgear. This is, he puts a, a headgear on me. I think you put a headgear on me. Headgear and gloves. And gloves. And uh, we, he starts into this martial arts uh, class, and he decides we're going to do a baptism by fire here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a spinning back kick, and he did, he does a, he'll tell you it was half speed. For me, it was full speed spinning back kick. Knocks me almost unconscious to the ground. And I remember looking up and I tried to stand. It was, I was very dizzy. You know, it was the like birds were, were going around my head. That was my introduction to Mark. <laughs> wow. Really? And then, you, and then you still, you, we stayed friends. And we stayed friends. We stayed friends. We've been, fact, my daughter, We've been friends ever since. Oh, my daughter's in love with his son. Oh, <laughs> oh so future, future romance? Could yeah, they be, but, out pretty well. Diego, oh, something Diego Mark. Pazogar. Hold on, I'm pulling up to the uh, Starbucks. That's the only. <laughs> He's going to Starbucks. I, I was going to suggest Starbucks. I need someone with Wi Fi. Yeah. <laughs> I need Wi Fi. You do. Tim, that's an awesome story. You and Mark. Right. Tim, where well, are you? Yeah. I, it, you would think I would have forgotten it because he would have knocked it out of me, but I remember. Right. Very Cobra Kai. Yeah, yeah, yes. A little, a little. Now, yeah. now I'm more like koala Kai. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, where are you? I'm in my workshop in um, uh, Florida. Oh, cool. All right. Palm Beach, Florida. Tim, weren't you uh, in Spain? Where's Dobby Tim, for, Tim weren't you, uh, didn't you move to Spain? Yes, we lived there for eight years in Spain, in Barcelona. Where, where in Spain? In Barcelona. Oh, it's what amazing. was that like? Uh, amazing, uh, it, uh, uh, an, an awakening. It was amazing. Wow. I met my wife there, and, and we had our first child there. Uh, Ethan was born right on in a hospital right on the Mediterranean in, in Barcelona. And uh, we, we had our second boy, of course, here in, in the United States. But uh, we traveled all of Europe together, and um, we we have some lifelong rem you know remembered experiences from from that time that are priceless i'm very grateful for wow that's amazing do you speak fluent spanish now from being there uh well my wife who's cuban and was raised in spain is 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 watching so if I tell you, yes, I'm fluent, <laughs> she's gonna go, oh. <laughs> because she tells hey, me my Spanish sucks. But I think I'm fluent. Did I call you Theo? <laughs> um, so yes, I speak the language certainly much better than I did before I, I moved there, but but uh, as far as well, fluency- Diego's, Diego's trying to test you out. Oh, yeah. test me out. Diego, but listen, Diego- Did I call you uh, Theo? You gotta go home. It's, it's easy for me to do this with you, Diego, because you're only going to get one word out. Go ahead. <laughs> 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 um, 
I was in Barcelona last year. I love it. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's a great, great place. Did what? What part of Barcelona did you stay in? Oh boy. Uh, I stayed by uh, Las Ramblas. <laughs> My buddy has a house. There. Las Ramblas. Last year, last year I went to uh, Madrid, and I went Las Ramblas. Las Ramblas, uh -huh. and then I went to uh, I went to Sevilla last year, and then I went to Madrid, and uh, wow. I went to Nurja. Um, I went to the south of Spain. I love Spain. It's amazing. <laughs> Such a beautiful yeah. country. Yeah, it's a lovely place. Be beautiful, beautiful place with beautiful yeah, people. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I was there in 95. I'd, I'd love to get back. Diego, can you talk about your screen test? Uh, yeah, so back to what I was saying before we were rudely interrupted, excuse me. I was. Uh, <laughs> I moved to New York in a worse snowstorm. I moved to New York in the worst snowstorm of, of New York history, except that last dump that they just got like last week. And funny, I was talking to my cousin about it because, you know, I was a kid. I was probably 19 and 20 years old. I auditioned for this show. I was going to go play soccer in Germany professionally um, at a high school. And then I got into acting and then I just was like, OK, let me give it a shot. So I moved to L.A. Um, I ended up getting the phone call two months after my audition in, de in December, like 15. My agent called me and she's like, you're moving to New York in January. And I was like, what? She goes, they want to go screen test you. And I was like, for what? They said, for the, another world. I said, by audition, I didn't even remember. So anyway, I go to my screen test. It was like me and Eddie Sabrian. There was like five guys on the plane. And I remember by the time I got, I didn't know what I was doing with my first screen test. I just remember like Times Square. I was like, wow, this is amazing. I was so nervous. I was the first guy that went to the audition. I don't remember who I was auditioning with. I think it might've been Robin Griggs. God bless her. Oh. Um, so I auditioned opposite her and then I just kind of waited in the green room and that was it. And I was just watching the other guys and they're like, okay, you're done, go home. And then I walked around Times Square. I was like, that, that was the strangest, more, it was just an odd experience. I'm sure you guys all felt, I mean, it was like, I was a kid. And then I got home and I didn't hear anything, a peep for a month. So it goes back to my original story. So in December 15th, I get a call. I had plans to go with my family. I think I was going to go to South America. And my agent, Meg, calls me. And she's like, Diego, you're moving to New York in January. You're moving to New York. And I was like, for what? And she's like, that's soap. And I was like, what? I got it. I was like, but I'm supposed to go to Germany to play soccer in February. Oh, she's wow. like, well, you're moving to New York. So I ended up just calling my coach in, in, in Germany. He was here at the time, and I told him that I'm not going to go play soccer. Um, and then wow. he was like, are you never crazy? And then I moved to New York and was there for eight years. Oh, wow. Eight, eight years. That's incredible. Wow. I mean, I, I was on the show for five years, and then I stayed for a couple more years, and then I, I came out here. Diego, so, I so, never knew any of I didn't that. know you about the show. How did I not know that? Great. Yeah, and I played soccer. We should have kicked the ball around together. I didn't we know that. We talked about it. We talked about going to Central Park. Yeah, I remember you talking about playing yeah. soccer. A soccer Never let it go. I didn't realize that you, that you had that. But I didn't realize that you were going did, to go. Did you work it. together? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, went to Germany, I went to Germany the summer before I, I, I got the screen test to go try out. And, you know, I, I grew up playing in South America. And so the, I was going to get drafted to potentially play uh, professionally. And then I tore, remember when I started the soap the first week? I played in a semi-pro and I tore ligaments in my foot and then I showed up with a cast in my leg. <laughs> no. it, was, it was supposed to be that summer and all of a sudden I show up and I, I don't remember who the executive producer was, but I show up and, and she's like, what happened? Why do you have a cast in your leg? I'm like, I, I was kind of playing soccer and I rolled it and now I tore ligaments in my foot. So I had a, do you remember that, Kelly? <laughs> I wasn't, I don't think I was oh, on the show then, but I think Joe was there. Right? Joe, do you remember no, that? No, Joe no. Doesn't, no. no, you were on before me. You were there before me. Tim, Tim so, were you? No, Tim was on after me. You, <laughs> were, you were the first one on this group. <laughs> Come on, None of us know that. Story straight. <laughs> Who's on first? Who's on first? Yeah. I know. Anyway, I had a and Emily was on after us. And Allison was on. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ask Vicky Wyndham. She probably remembers it, you know. <laughs> um, one of the fans, uh, Fred, just said, hey, Tim Timothy, your name's spelled wrong. He said it, he said it was a joke. So we, we're not in on the inside joke. 
So, oh, right. so, so wrong. This. I'll, so I'll joke... give you I'll give you the 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 abridged version. Go we ahead, we were many of the of the folks here, Diego, Mark, Joe, myself, we were on a float riding in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day parade. I was gonna say that. <laughs> and uh Don Pardo, who was the announcer for Saturday Night Live at the time. Yeah. Uh he was doing the announcing of the parade and he got my name wrong and he got everybody's name wrong as we remember it. Now that's not really true. I no. don't want to slander Don Pardo. Uh, I'll, 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 <laughs> let me, let me, let me just pop in. Wait, can I back up for a minute though? I'm yeah. shocked. Another world uh, was on a float. Yeah. Yes. We were, we were on the Jolly Polly pirate ship. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> Right here, right here. 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 Right <laughs> exactly what he did. So, so we said Barbara. And, and the funny thing is, like, three quarters of my family pronounces our our name is Barbero, right? So it wasn't that big of a deal to me that he that he because within our family there's different pronunciations and stuff. So it wasn't a big deal to me, but it was a big deal to everybody else. Then when we came up, you know, when our on our flow came up, Katie Couric butchered Tim's name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she, she she somehow flubbed Timothy Gibbs, right, and right. so it just became a bit. So from that <laughs> point on, we just made everything sweet. So Diego became Diablo Sereno. Diablo <laughs> Sereno. I'm like what? Some Diablo? Guys, some Joseph Bay Barra. Right. I'm the guys. And 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 Mark became Merc. Mortimer. Oh, yeah, Merc. Mark and Mortimer. Mortimer. And I think the best was we went and told this story to Anna Holbrook. And we told her if you were on the float, yes. we would have called you Hal Holbrook. <laughs> <laughs> that, was Ryan that, Miller. Tim, that was the second best one. The best one was from NBC's Season of the World, the Emmy Award winning actress playing Felicia Gallant, Dana Plato. <laughs> <laughs> you said Dana Plato? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, we, had, we had a lot That's of fun. Funny. By the way, That's funny. I was putting in my name, Tomothy Gibbs, there, I was imagining that Diego was going to put Diablo, <laughs> Joseph, he was going to put Merck. It was going to be perfect. Oh, wait, I just realized that your name is, your last name says Gibbs. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Timothy. I just changed it. Me. Yeah, Diego's <laughs> looking on a phone. It's very <laughs> small for him. It's very small Timothy for him. Timothy Gibbs. Can you see it, Tim? <laughs> I can see it. I got it. Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's Wait, great. Diego. I'm, I'm just thrilled that they put you guys on a float for, uh, you know, yeah. that's... Yeah, we were that thrilled. Have, we shared it with the Days of Our Lives guys. <laughs> but hey, but that's yeah. still, that, that was great for, you know... Yeah, it was. So, promotion. Yeah, 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 great. Yeah. You know what? I, I have to say something, Alan. This is really cool what you've done because the regardless of what we talk about as a group, whether it's it's it's, you know, something deep or not... Uh, this is the kind of fun and camaraderie that we had on that show. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. It's this is how we all got along. Yes. And it's really cool that you just uh, recaptured. You captured that again. <laughs> yeah, it's, thanks. It's, yeah. That. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that you know, it's it's interesting because I you know I started this because of the pandemic and for fans, but it's that th you know you were in their living rooms. You you still are family. They remember everything better than all of us together put together. Um, and it's a nice way for them to see you all in this light that really took place backstage. Yes. You know, because they saw you all acting, but now it's, you know, it's a nice way for them to see you guys. Yeah. But thanks for being here. Thanks for saying that. Yes. Um, can you share some storylines, favorite storylines? You mentioned uh, Dana, uh, what, what do they call Linda? <laughs> Call? We, we called her yeah. that only when we were doing Don I have to say, okay, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, just, just on the line of what, you know, on the line of what Tim just shared, 
it's really true. We all had this, this chemistry together. This, it felt like a real family, you know, here we are all in Brooklyn, right? I think we were in mid, Midwood, Midwood. Brooklyn. Midwood, yep. Yeah. UK and 14th Street. Or, yes, and and we. It's, okay. I believe yeah. it's been. I believe it's been knocked down. Yeah. But also, yeah. Joe mentioned Don Pardo being the announcer for Saturday Night Live. That was the first st studio for Saturday Night Live from Brooklyn. That's that right. The original so Peter Pan studio. Yeah. So all this history. Oh, really? Boy, was so that I place haunted. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, but I was going to say, we, you know, we, we, we felt like a family, all of us, and we were laughing all the time. I mean, just this, the story that Tim told, and we're, here we are all laughing. This is how we were. And I was going to say with the fans, uh, before I get into the storyline thing, but when we were with the fans at the events, you know, the charity events, it, we had this kind of rapport, and, and we engaged everyone, and they also engaged all of us, and we were laughing. That's all I remember. But um, one storyline that I, I really loved when – with uh, Allison and, and Diego, um, Allison and I had an apartment together. Emily and I were roommates. Me and Emily were roommates. And uh, Diego and Emily worked at the hospital together. Tomas and, and Emily worked uh, at the hospital, at Bay City Hospital. And um, I remember our apartment looked like the friend set. I don't know if anyone remembers that we had the pink couch. Remember that, Diego? We had yeah, that that's pink. when you tripped. When I told you to trip well, on your last You trip. Yeah. So I'm gonna get to that. All right. So I remember we, we have a scene and Emily and I are talking about Nick. And I think Nick and I, you know, broke up. I don't know, Mark, if you remember this, but our characters break up and then Emily makes out with with Mark. And then I tell <laughs> and then I tell and then I tell Emily, well, hey, you know. Mark and I, you know, Nick and I kissed too. And we were like having an argument about that. And then Diego walks, no, Diego's on the couch and he's lying down. And I think you were reading or something like that. And then he gets up to leave. And this is while we're having a conversation, Emily and I. Diego gets up off the couch and, you know, says, well, you know, I'm out of here, guys. You know, I don't want to listen to this. And as he's walking out, we just hear like, 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 like like a building tumble down or like blocks tumbling down like we it was so loud and alice and i we're in the scene you know and we have to get stuff out they're always churning stuff out so quickly as you know and we just start laughing and diego's on the ground and everybody's laughing on the set okay and we have to go back to one right and then Diego, oh, Diego, you really you really tripped which was so funny i mean your expression was so funny and when you got up they were like, okay, we got to go back. We got to go back to one. So they're like, in five, four, three, two. And we go back to the scene and Diego gets up again and he, <laughs> but he did that. He did that purposely because it was so funny. We wanted to keep that. That was our sense of play. I mean, we did stuff like that all the time. I mean, just because it's itself doesn't mean you can't have funny moments, right? We had so many funny things. And then I was telling Joe, I mean, Joe connect and I connected the other day through text. And I, I was saying, you remember when Diego used to say, well, well, do you remember when he used to say, well, Sophia? Wow. Wow. That started from Tim. That's cool. <laughs> you remember that, Tim? Yeah, that was my acting coach. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what he <laughs> so anyway, that number. <laughs> that was from Tim. Wow, that was from Tim. Guy <laughs> texted me. She's like, "Remember when Diego used to say well, well?" And I'm like, "No, <laughs> no recollection of that at all." That's so funny. Um, you mentioned the Peter Pan, but also Esther Williams' swimming pool was right. underneath oh, Casey yeah. Studios. Oh yeah, really? Right. Wow. Yeah. So the original yeah. cast of SNL, I didn't. Yep. Know. Yep. The and the Cosby show. show and the Cosby show. The Cosby show. That's right. And, and, and do you think Brooklyn played a large part in your camaraderie? Because you, you know, you you really couldn't leave that studio to you know there wasn't much out in Midwood to do. Well, right. and it was. I mean, people brought their dogs. They brought their babies. It, it was like you're going to be there for the whole day. It's going to take you. And that was so cool. I was like, this is so different than I had imagined it. It was so, it was so welcoming and warm. And it's like you real your lives were considered. You know, it wasn't just like come and give me your time and then go home. Yeah. And I was just thinking about that too with Diego. Like, 
I think of it, it, it doesn't feel that long ago. You know, I it just, doesn't. part of me is like, I think I'm the same person, but then you think that was huge to have two girls and a guy living together. It was yeah. like, wow, that is yeah. breaking barriers. And you know, that's like, for my company. you know, it's like, what yeah. are you talking about? You know, those kind of um, things were new. Who is this? Schnetzer. No, Stephen Bergman just Stephen Bergman just sent this to me. What is it? Who is that? It's a, is that Mark? I think it's, it's me. Mark. Hold, hold that up again, please. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it looks like, yeah, it looks like Mark. <laughs> oh, was that at the? Uh, that looks that like that, Mark. Was that, that at the, like uh, the, the fan club yeah, thing, Mark? Me. Didn't you walk by Mark, the whole Mark, thing? Mark, Mark, oh, you know who that is? Is that James? Uh, James and Mark? Mark, yeah, I, think idea. The, uh, Mark I think that's you in the middle with the blonde wig. I don't know who the other two are. I'll ask Stephen. Diego, Mark, and James Hyde. James Hyde. James that's, Hyde. That's, oh, that's right, James Hyde. Oh, wow. oh goodness. Now, wow. That's Diego, you don't even recognize yourself? No, let me see again. <laughs> It's, it's a, I don't recognize a, myself now, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, Joe, can you share memories of working with Judy Evans? I know fans always love hearing about Judy. Uh, Judy, um, Judy was one of a kind. I mean, you just, nothing was, she did, God, there's so much to go. I mean, I don't even know where to begin. First of all, she's hilarious. She's, she's mm -hmm. like got the warmest spirit. She's just, but she's off the walls, funny all the time. Um, yet, when it came to you know soap world where we had to learn like 30 pages a night and and you know you had so much material to learn um, a lot of us kind of you know would get the gist of the scene and as long as we didn't you know change the meaning it was fine judy would learn everything like word by word line by line verbatim she had this like photographic memory where you know if she forgot a line she'd be like, okay it's the third page of the scene about three quarters of the way down you know she could tell you where it was she just couldn't tell you what the line was um but she was just, she just, you know, at, when I came in, they originally had me working with Alice, with uh, Alice Barrett, you know, Frankie. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we did, I don't know if they were planning on us, you know, putting us together as a couple or what, but then Tom left um, to go do pilot season. So they, they put me together with Judy. And when Tom came back, Judy was um, very protective and helpful. And she was like, look, this is going to be a thing like, you know, cause she knew that I was young and I didn't really, you know, know the dynamics of what was going to go on. So she was, she really, um, she, she looked out for me in terms of, you know, the scenes and try to prepare me for what was going to happen. Cause Tom was a whirlwind when he came back too, you know? Um, but, uh, I can't say enough great things about Judy. She was just, she's just a great person to have on your side and just a wonderful human being. And, uh, and, um, yeah. You know, I, I see Dahlia shaking her. You got to work with her a lot of as well. Of course. Right? I mean, when I started, I, a lot of my scenes in the beginning, obviously, were, were with Joe and Judy. And right away, I felt, wow, this is my sister in law on the show. I mean, it felt that close. And, and she, she would always, she was a hugger also. She was very warm and very supportive, you know. I was really nervous those first few months, of course, and she just said, you know, you're doing great, you're doing your thing. She was encouraging, um, just a lot of love, you know, a lot of love on that set altogether. Very, very encouraging, very supportive, just, you know, yeah. It, well, Joe, I love the story that you say about the lines because Judy learned from Beverly McKenzie, who she worked with on Guiding Life, but Beverly got her start on Another World, and Beverly used to taught Judy to learn her script from the end of the week backwards. Right. She did. Yes. Which is I, 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 was that. I just that. remember. Yeah. And she learned them all on Sunday. Like Sunday yeah. afternoon, Sunday night. She'd learn up everything for the week. Um, yeah, but the thing was, funny thing was, and you know, not talking out of school, sometimes there were some scripts that were I we all felt I would hesitate to speak for everybody, but I will. Some were better than others, right? So yeah. there were lines that sometimes made sense and was like, it was really easy. And other times you're like, oh my God, who wrote this? You know? Mm -hmm. um, and most of us, I would hesitate to say that most of us would change, you know, just make it conversational so it was easier to say. Um, Judy would never do that. Judy, Judy made it her, her obstacle, her challenge 
to make right. whatever ridiculousness was on the page, she would say it verbatim and make it work somehow. It was her she little did. game that she played with herself. Yeah, uh, that it was amazing. Th yeah, just just on the along the line of what Joe just said, she had she had a real respect for the discipline of of how soap run. I mean, the, and and she she didn't defer from that. She stayed on it and she learned every word verbatim and made it come off the page. I mean, she really did. I mean, I have to say. She had and a, crying. I mean, my God. I mean, you yeah. There's, there's no one like. like she that. Had, no, no, no. she flipped that switch, and it was real. She, did, yeah, she, she was that, great. She was very lover, not everything. Yeah, yeah I I and grew up with her on Guiding cool. Light, and uh, you know, she she made you share shed a tear or two. Yeah, <laughs> she yeah. definitely knew. Hey, Mark, um, can you talk about your favorite story and storyline at, at Another World, and working with Cal Brown as your dad? You know, I spent some time with him at his place in, in um, Vermont uh, before we even got to work together a whole lot and learned a lot about him as a person. Um, what I could tell you is every time I work with him, he's just like, all right, Mark, father, son, right? Father, son, let's do this. And we're, 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 yeah, I'm your dad, you're my boy. Remember that, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Cause I'm, I'm so green at, at this. I had no idea what I was doing. I just remember him making me feel so comfortable all the time. Yes. Yeah. Do you, have a favorite, do you have a favorite storyline there? No, I don't recall us having too much of a storyline together. Um, no, I don't, mean with, I don't mean with Cal, any, you know, at another world. Um, <laughs> I thought it was interesting that I was accused of rape. I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, with, um, Hard to play, I assume. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the whole court scene, I kind of lost it, lost it a bit in the courtroom scene at one time. And uh, I was pretty embarrassed about that. But uh, I happen to be friends with Tom Eplin. So that was, uh, you know, so I had some influence from him on how to handle <laughs> myself. And sometimes it didn't work out so well with Mark Mortimer. <laughs> Tom Eplin. I saw yeah, he's crazy, man. Day, like a month ago. Did you really? A hardware store. Oh, I, he, I ran into him too in Studio City. He has he two has daughters. Yeah, he has two kids. He has two kids, and and he's exactly the same. I mean, he still has that, you know, yeah. that energy about yeah. him. Yeah, I lived with him for a while in his house in Long Beach before oh, I got wow. my own house in Long Beach. Oh, yeah, really? oh, yeah. He, when he wow. built his house, fixed his house in Long, Long Beach, he he built me like a studio apartment there. Oh, and, oh wow! Uh, oh, that's yeah. awesome. That's cool. So I went from Brooklyn to Long Beach. Well, at, yeah, least we were you, at least you don't have to sleep at the studio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I did many times. It's probably yeah, most of you did. Yeah, yeah we all many times. I hey, like, Joe, Joe, tell your accordion. Oh, sorry, Al. No, I was just going to say, he was the one who told me, who said, it was like, if you change it at the run through in the morning, the line, and we don't stop you, you can say it like that for the like it, the director doesn't say anything about your change then you can keep it i was like oh thanks thanks for that tom yeah <laughs> that's so funny he did yeah. stuff like that mm -hmm. joe that accordion thing I, I was trying to find that scene no accordion <laughs> yeah it was just one line it wasn't like it's it just it was just um did they write that we both said it, or did we make up that we both said it? We we, we threw it in there that we both said it. We, we decided to say it together. You know why not? Yeah, it was just one little line, but it's just like, and it, it's just indicative of of Dahlia and I, um, you know, in in the roles and in the relationship. It, it was just cool because I think she was getting married. I, you were going to get married, right? I think so. Yeah. Right, Mark. <laughs> Who were you, were you marrying Nick? I, don't I think I was marrying Nick. Nick. Wait, yeah. Uh, it was only, like or maybe Matt Corey. I don't even remember. We I, I talking mean, about. I don't know. We were talking about setting up a wedding or something. Yeah, I was we're setting up some wedding. Yeah. The, 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 the fans will tell us. Uh, um, the fans. We'll do it in the Mark. back of the house. We'll have a tent. We'll have thing, and and then the line was no accordions, please. And um, I don't know. We just uh, somehow we just jumped on it together and went. You know, Oh, accordions, please. And it was like it was like one of those rare times that you have an inside job. I, I think that's so funny. She always thought that was funny. I, yeah, well, it was. Um, it was I guess it was both. Yeah. Cool. Um, and Gary uh, Mark, Dunn, what, was great. Mark, yeah. one of the fans said you were brilliant for Michael's death during the Michael's death storyline. One, one of the fans just commented. 
That's really yeah, nice of him to say. He was. That was he really nice of him to say. Um, these guys are all seasoned actors. I was I was not a seasoned actor. I was taking classes while I was on the show. So I would have moments where I thought I did well and moments where I thought, what just happened? What just happened here? And I'm like, yeah, it's good, fine. So let's go move on. Let's go move on. I'm like, I'm going to get kicked off the show for sure. But uh, <laughs> It was a lot of sure. pressure. It was, yeah. Well, did you all feel that? Dry, dry dress, shoot. That yeah. was it, right? Yeah. So, no, not to, not, not to just jump on that. There were times, though, honestly, there were times when they would schedule Judy and I scene, and Judy and my scenes at the end of the day. And if you didn't finish shooting everything by eight o'clock, the crew had to take a break for half an hour. I remember they that. had to have dinner. And everybody had to come back at eight thirty and start all over again, or not start all over, but finish the day. Yeah. And they <clears throat> must have paid like golden time or something if you went mm -hmm. past eight o'clock. So there were days when certain people on the show would take longer in, in dry rehearsal and longer on the set and. Just it would go on and on and on, and it was like right. literally, we never got Judy and I wouldn't even get rehearsal like dry rehearsal, um, so we didn't even say the lines out loud. We just figured we would go through it on the set, and they would call us down at like seven fifty three, and it was seven minutes before eight o'clock. <laughs> Hurry up, and, your and say <laughs> you guys don't mind going right to tape, do you? And we're like, we we didn't even get a dry rehearsal. We haven't even said the words out loud. Oh, you guys can handle it. Don't worry, it'll be fine. And the first time we ever said the words literally out loud was what went on the air. Wow. And we'd finish it by Maybe that was the best. Yeah. yeah, it was pressure, yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that is pressure. definitely pressure. Yeah. Hey, Tim, um, you and Josie on the show were going to adopt a little girl. Do you remember that? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the only one. You're like what show? No, I'm not. I'm. 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 I'm not being funny. I don't. Yeah, I don't no, no, that's that's fine. But I think <laughs> the um girl you were going to adopt was uh the actress Sarah Highland, who ended up being the, the oldest daughter on Modern Family. Oh, I, I I I remember now very well. I remember Sarah as a as a child because she had these huge blue eyes. Uh, yes. Now I remember. You jog my memory. I, funny, I mean, first of all, that just shows you the, the the level of fantasy that was injected into that program because, of course, I was a, an infant myself. And I think uh, it, it had, had the character that I was playing had any of the traits that I was walking around with myself in real life, they would have rejected my request for adoption before I hit the door. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. that and rightfully is, so. <laughs> that is so funny. Diego, you mentioned earlier about the show um, that you were doing Time of Your Life. What was it like working with Jennifer Love Hewitt and Jennifer Garner? You know, it was one of those things that just kind of sprung up so quickly. So when I, when I left the show after five years, I just kind of wanted to just see what else was out there. Um, I... I test, I screen tested and I, I auditioned for the show 10 times, you know, because there was a big coming out after Party of Five, so they were making this big deal. I literally auditioned for it 10 times, so by the time I went to test, talk about pressure, I tested by myself. And then all of a sudden, one guy from New York shows up for the, uh, for because, you know, you have the studio test and then you have the, uh, the, the Fox test, because that was for the network, the network and the studio. So if you pass the studio, then you go to the network. So after 10 auditions of going back and forth and partnering me up with Jennifer Love Hewitt, seeing if we had chemistry, which we did. She was very nice and very helpful. Um, by that point, I was just like, so by the time I got the show, um, we shot the pilot and then the other lead got fired. So I was like, oh, my God, after all this, don't tell me that they're going to fire me again. Like, no. So I, and the executive producer, the creator called me and he's like, you're fine. He's like, we just wanted to revamp the show a little bit and then they brought uh, Jonathan Sheck to be the other male lead and then they partnered me up with Jennifer Gardner so Jennifer Gardner was now my love interest and Jennifer Gardner was now Jonathan Sheck's so then we it was like a you know we were just all like um it was an ex amazing experience it was a great opportunity unfortunately the show didn't last as long as they wanted it to last we were after Ally McBeal which was an amazing time slot but I think for the for the time and for the for the way that the show was, it didn't quite fit with that time, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, because I think they were counting on the Party Five 
followers, which they had a lot, but it was mostly about Jennifer Love's character rather than an ensemble cast. That that must have been before Jennifer Garner got Alias, right? Oh yeah, yeah. It was well, I was when we shot the yeah. last show because we the show got picked up for another season. We shot two episodes, and then the show got canned. But the last two episodes, she had just tested for Alias, and when we went to do some voiceovers afterwards, she had gotten Alias. Um, wow! So it was right off the bat, and then you know she blew up. Yeah, a little. Yeah, 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 I bet. yeah, just a little. But they were both amazing to work with. They were Let amazing. me ask a question: what What's in her wallet? <laughs> cash, baby. Okay, right. <laughs> a lot of cash. A lot of cash. 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 Allison, what What do you have a favorite time at Another World? I, you know, I don't know. I thought it was really funny. The whole, I, I don't know. You know, the with Dahlia and Mark and and Diego, just the whole love triangle thing and every day you're looking at the script you're like who was the thing today like who am i dating today and and um i do remember the date scene diego where they had a dance like coach come and like we had to do that little dance thing and they, they did this whole like lighting it was all like cuban music and we have it was i thought that was hilarious yeah we were we were good friends, and so we're like, "How to make this sexy?" We're trying to make this sexy. <laughs> Awkward. They put it like they put like what I call the raw chicken cutlets in my dress, and <laughs> have a friend from home. Like right. I didn't know you, so I'm like, "Oh yeah, I got a little help." Anyway, it was hilarious. I think so, we shared those, right? Those I think we did. <laughs> I think we shared the raw chicken cutlets. What do you think? And we're all taught each of you, Dahlia. If you want to go first. Um, I think it, it taught me discipline in, in yes. and, 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 um, a really good work ethic, you know, that I brought with me to all of my future, um, you know, experiences, you know, after that show, I mean, it, it was such a fast pace. It was, you know, uh, and working with an ensemble, like the one that everybody together this way. Um, it really showed me how to how to work with other actors and and um, and with great directors there. There were really excellent directors at Another World. I thought and, and they were so helpful and um, so that that's really what it did for me. I mean, just bringing that sense of of respect for our craft, honestly, because I think it gets a bad rap sometimes. You know, soaps. You know, mm -hmm. people think you know it's. Uh, you know, it's uh, not, it doesn't really have that much substance, but in a sense, you know, we had to do a one act play in a sense every every day and, and go over these pretty interesting storylines that we had to churn out pretty quickly. Um, so I think we, I think we established that, you know? Joe? Drink or swim. If you can't uh, keep up, you're done. The first thing it taught me, ne never ride on a float with uh, Tom of the Guy, or Diego. Yeah, all bro. But uh, no, I, Dahlia, I would say what Dahlia said is exactly right. And I mean, I hate to say this, but I think if you if you can do a soap really well, I mean, you could you could be bad at anything, right? But if you can do a soap well, um, I, I think you can pretty much do anything on camera well. I mean, I, I think because you're you're not given you're not given uh, material that has been worked and worked and worked and tested and read through and tweaked and tightened. You know, you're getting material that's just cranked out and you're not given rehearsal time or time to figure out what you want. So everything is just uh, at rapid, at warp speed. And if you can, if you can make good work out of that, I think you can make good work out of a lot of things. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just think it's one of the most difficult things to do well. Um, I, don't think people I don't think people understand that it's how hard it is. No, it's a lot of no. responsibility. Memorizing all those lines, like being on it's just it's, it was a lot. I mean, think about the amount, amount of material we did every day. Oh, yeah. it's God, crazy. Every day, and then every then the next day, and the next day, and the next week, and the next month. It's just it never ends. What if you do you a know, movie? You know who it? was amazing? Who would literally like? I, I have so much respect for her. Yeah, I mean, remember when I when I was on the show, I went through four girlfriends, four Maggies. <laughs> literally, like it was the weirdest year and a half of like, oh, we have another executive producer. I was like, well, who is it now? I went through three executive producers and four girlfriends. So I never really, wow. felt like, we never really felt safe because we didn't know what was going on. There were so many changes and stuff that, 
Um, so who did you say? I, what? Who did you who did you just say was Robin great? Grace. Robin. Oh, Grace. Robin Grace. You know, she was the original Maggie that I screen tested opposite. Yeah. She was. She had a memory, like you would say, like you were saying, uh, Joe Barbera. She had a memory, like uh, like Judy. Like, literally, she was like, uh, let me, can you run these lines with me real quick? Literally, on the set. And she was like, duck, 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 duck. okay, I'm good. And she would just nail it. And I'm like, how do you do that? You know, you just have it or you don't. And unfortunately, I had to study a lot. And I, I was like Dahlia said, you have to have a lot of perseverance and you just have to, it makes you focus and you have to just have that regimented work schedule. That's the only way that you're going to be able to do it. For me, anyway. Well, especially when you're really young, it, you know, it, yeah, it's like even though old. you have a full time, even though you have a full time job, you want to go out or do something. You can't. You really no. had to go home and do I your was, homework. I was you... living. I was living between the studio when we were shooting late and Long Island at my family's in the worst snowstorm of New York history in like 1999. So I was commuting on that train, trying to catch a train at 5.20 in the morning so I could catch a train on four foot of snow. I'm running through the snow a mile to get to the train station the days that I ended up showing up, running to the train wow. station. By the time I got to the set, I was like, it was seven o'clock in the morning. I've been up for three hours. Like, I was <laughs> So most of the time I would sleep at the studio. We yeah. had five, we had five o'clock call. I Diego. Sometimes we would ride together. They would bring a car, right? And then, but it was like a five. A, like they would pick you up at five. Yeah. Sometimes sure. earlier than that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, yeah. Definitely an experience going out to JC Studios for sure. And that was the other thing you talked about about the bond and stuff, Alan. You know, when you asked us about being out in Brooklyn, the other part of it, not only just being in Brooklyn, but the fact that many of us the rode car. together in the morning. Yeah. you know, on our way out to the studio. So we were sitting in the back seat of a car together for, you know, 45 minutes yeah. before we ever even got to the studio. And there's a lot of bonding time there too. But you also got to, or I think you did, you actually traveled probably with other people you didn't work with, right? Yeah. All yeah, the time. You got to like, you got to, look, you know, meet some of the other cast that you didn't cross in scenes with. Exactly. Um, I yeah. really think, like talking about what it taught me, and I think what Joe and Dahlia and I mean, yeah, the hard work and, and how you're not working with, you know, O'Neill or Miller. It's not like this incredible writing all the time. But I also think it makes you realize that it was really the people. It's like they've created these characters that fans loved. It wasn't real it wasn't about this amazing writing. It was about these these, these actors creating characters and consistently loving and vulnerable and present. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really what a soap opera does. And it's kind of interesting what you're doing, Alan, here is like, yeah, here we all are all in the living rooms. And like, we were in people's living rooms. And right. you know, I almost wonder if the people are missing the soap operas now because they're all like alone and isolated. But I think that's what it was, is that you guys all really did, created these wonderful, consistent characters, even though the writers, I mean, it would be all over the place writing different writers not even knowing the character yeah. sometimes and you just would make it consistent yeah. but allison you just said it i mean right now or, or especially when the pandemic started definitely especially you know this show's been off since 99 you know yeah. you, it it definitely seeing your faces definitely does something for people who are isolated and and missing because they're not only missing their television shows, but they're missing their real family because you can't be with them. So yeah. it, it is what you just said. Hey, Tim, can you talk about um, Amy Carlson as well and uh, working with her? Yeah, she was um, she was great. She she really had a lot of experience not only on that show, but I think uh, in daytime and and dealing with a lot of what everyone else was talking about uh, is you know, the pressures of, of the daily routine on a daytime show. Um, so she helped a lot. Uh, she helped me adjust to, to, to that. And um, I think that, um, you know, I, I'd have to say that probably part of the reason that I didn't get fired from that show and that I lasted three years uh, was because of Amy. I, I think that you know, a large part of, of whether we succeed or not in that format has to do with 
who we're we're paired yeah. up with. True. And um, at at least fifty percent of it has to go to that person you're paired with, who magically you you have good chemistry with, perhaps. I would say that everything Diego, Dahlia, Joe, Mark, Allison, everything they said about about the commitment it takes to to perform on a soap, as long as you have most of that intact, in and it, then it's all about the chemistry. And uh, if you're Great. fortunate enough to have good chemistry, like I did with Amy, um, then you you can make something out of out of the show and. I have to give a lot of that credit to Amy as far as the chemistry goes, because she did a lot of of the heavy lifting in in in, in projecting that, you know. Mm -hmm. hmm. You guys were great together. Yeah, you are. That we was were. a great, great couple. Thanks. That's very nice of you guys to say. It was a lot of fun, and she she. I mean, I thought you were okay. You can pay them later. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, you. you can pay them later. Pay them later. <laughs> I love so, it, Tim. I, I, <laughs> I love you too, buddy. Most of you are still acting. Mark, you're not acting, or right? No, no. I I was acting for a while. I did uh, some, some some very cool B films with uh, um, mostly martial arts stuff. And um, one day I was walking my dog in, and uh, I was living in uh, Hollywood. And uh, some guy walked up to me and put a gun in my face, and and I was like. Dude, wrong guy. Um, he's all glassy eyed. I probably could have killed him, but um, just didn't do it. Um, so I walked upstairs, grabbed my wife, and said, We're moving home. And uh, we opened up a business here. And now we own three businesses. And um, what kind of business? Construction, wow. roofing, and painting. Cool. Nice. And you're That's in Chicago. Right? You put a little yeah. remodel my kitchen for me. You can't yeah. afford me. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You, 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 joking, Joe. Just joking. You know, Mark won't tell you this, but he's built uh, his company is 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 not big. It's huge. He's built the biggest company of its kind in his area, and one of the biggest in his state. He's got a huge corporation up there. Oh, that's that he's amazing, built. man. Good for that, you. Congratulations, Mark. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, but. I, that that must have been some scary shit though too. Excuse my, what? I wasn't a, afraid. I, it. I wasn't afraid. Wow. I mean, that's not, that's not the first time it's happened. I was in the military, so uh, I was more afraid of living there with my wife. That's what I was afraid of, and gotcha. not me not be, me not being there for her. Well, um, and then I will also add thank you for your service. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah I did. Thank, thank you. Absolutely. Um, I was going to ask if you. I was going to ask if you made the the flag behind you. No, my brother-in-law made that for me. Oh, that's awesome! I love it. Yeah. It's awesome. Mark, awesome. Mark, did you say you're in Chicago? Yes, I am. What part? Uh, Geneva. Oh wow! I shouldn't have given that one away. But in the West. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be there tomorrow. Uh, nice. Oh, really? <laughs> I'll be knocking at your door. Um, <laughs> uh, about, you, uh, West suburb. Oh, Tim, nice. you, uh, you're still acting, but you also own an antique store, right? That's true. Yes, sir. How did you get into that? Uh, my wife and I opened uh, our first store in Spain um, some years ago. And when we moved back to the States, we, we reopened here. And uh, we've been open here now for a few years. And it's uh, been a growing and it's just a wonderful family business that we own. Um, Great. Awesome. pretty simple life. I'm not really acting anymore. I was, I, I did some, some acting in, uh, in Spain. I was fortunate enough to do some films out there. Uh, and, uh, but I haven't, uh, I did a, I did a bit on a TV series here when I first touched ground, but, uh, really all my focus nowadays is on the store and, and, uh, on, on our family. That's great, man. Can you give Speaking us a, a of, like page and, and like what's the name of your store and all that? The name of the store is Archaic, uh, and uh, it's uh, we focus on um, antiques from the 19th to 20th century with a modern twist. So anything from the modernist period or or even uh, Art Deco, modern Art Deco, anything that from its day was was a bit modern, we might gravitate toward that. It's art, sculpture, and antiques in in the realm of furniture and objects. Cool. 
And we I won't tell you this either, but uh, I've got several of those pieces. They're really beautiful. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. <laughs> um, and, and many of you have children. Or I know Allison, Tim, Mark, any, and Joe, any of them uh, following in your theatric footsteps? Absolutely not. I'd start, I'd do a, some youth theater stuff, like after school stuff in my little town. And my my older one, oh, here's one coming in right now. What? No, yes, no, okay. my first, um, <laughs> both of them have been in my show. So they, but, and my 15 year old is pretty into it. And I'm like, no, 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 this is fun. <laughs> Fun, but not, not for what you want to get paid for. No. Right. You're you're teaching young kids, right? I yeah. I started. I it basically first to high school, for, like first grade in high school. We and I actually started teaching a playwriting class. So they write the play and then we perform it. Um, oh, which wow. is pretty wow. Cool. And we actually wrote. We were just starting. Um, it was mostly middle schoolers just starting when the pandemic hit so I ended up teaching the rest of it on zoom but I, I'm kind of waiting I feel I feel like we could perform it on zoom but not the same so I'm waiting so that they can do it live yeah um, I think that that's I don't know you know um yeah. I mean, it was actually kind of fun they actually it was a cute story they are now looking back on it saying it's just it's too stupid but it was cute they came up with this idea this is in March that they're they're doing a Zoom class because they're all quarantined, and one person kind of wishes they somebody's doing a seance kind of thing, and they make a wish. I wish it could go back to normal, and they go back in time hmm. to October right. and try to hmm. solve the virus before it happens. Oh, and then, wow. and it turns wow. out that it was all the dogs. The dogs came up with a virus to keep us um, at home. And they didn't realize it was going to make us so sick. Anyway, so it's, it's so cute. Um, but anyway. Wow, that's great. Yeah, that hey, great. Diego and Dahlia, uh, acting during this time or auditioning, what is that like? And Joe as well. I, I mean, but I know, Joe, you're writing um, and producing. But I'll, we'll come to that in a second. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, I, I'm mostly doing voiceover work uh, now, which I really enjoy. I mean, fortunately, I'm able to work from home. You know, I've, I've made my closet into a makeshift voiceover studio. Um, Amazing. Having to engineer my own work and edit my own work has been, you know, this forced me to get out of my comfort zone, this crazy pandemic. And um, so that keeps I know me you, you actually um, are the voice of United Airlines. And I have to yeah. ask. I have to ask my sister. She's been a flight attendant there for 35 years. So oh, really? Wow. She She's off, you know, right now during the pandemic, but she's yeah. still employed by that. When we're able so to fly, to... when we're able to, you have to her. ask her, because uh, find out if she can get me some perks, because I don't get a free drink. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't get that. But um, what are, you, what, are you on commercials or like in the plane? Uh, I'm, I'm the voice of... Uh, the in-flight entertainment, so I do all the trailers for the films and cool. TV and all of the music that they have, and it's it's been a great gig, you know. Cool. Um, and that's then amazing. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, very cool. cool. How how being able to work from home would be amazing record, because I imagine they're constantly changing the. Yeah, the they're, act, they're That's a good question. Um, they're they're constantly you know having to change you know. I have to record monthly, but we have to do, you know, rehearsals for it. Even they want to, they, they changed, you know, the order of how they want to do things. So it's, you know, it's a couple of times a month that they sort of churn out these scripts and then they do stuff ahead of time. So it's a, it's a really, um, it keeps me busy that way. Um, and uh, recently I did an episode of SWAT. Uh, and this was right in the middle of um, when I think, CBS was one of the first productions that came, you know, started up again uh, during COVID, you know, the high s surge of what's happening in LA, of course, it's been crazy. Um, so I worked, um, I did an episode, I played an FBI agent, but it was a very interesting experience being on set in under these circumstances. It was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot going on. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah, and then I like Allison as well. I'm I also teach, um, you know, in between gigs. I I teach uh, 
young professional actors uh, who actually work more than I do. Um, actually, not right now, but um, I'm teaching a Zoom, having to teach a Zoom class. You know, I work with, I'm an audition coach, basically. And the kids are anywhere from seven to 12 years old, and they're amazing. So I learned a lot from them, actually. Yeah. That's amazing. And, and Diego, um, you awesome. actually wrote a thriller. Is that correct? Yeah. Diego? So I had a little bit of a... Can you guys hear me? And, and, yeah. And wait, I want to ask, with Brian Bloom from As the World Turns? Yeah. So I did this... I, I, had a, I had a crazy life experience that happened to me three years ago. Um, I don't know if... Dalla, do you remember I used to have panic attacks? Do you remember yeah. that? I used mm -hmm. to have weird panic attacks. That was actually my brain hemorrhaging. So, um, I what? three years ago, three years ago, I did a cleanse. I was on this show called Insecure, um, which is which is on HBO. I got HBO. I got the I was one of the leads opposite um, Issa Rae to play her love interest, going back and forth. I shot two episodes, and then I did this cleanse. And on the third day on the, of the cleanse, I had a seizure, full on seizure in my sleep. Oh my God. Ended up in the oh hospital. Um, had no idea what had happened to me, you know. And then basically, thank God, I had to have brain surgery. So oh God. the doctor, I didn't, the doctor basically came in. He said, what did you do? I literally, I woke up in the hospital. I had no idea. I was taken by, by, the, by an ambulance, uh, bit half oh of my tongue off. And make a long story short, the doctor's like, you don't have cancer, but you do have something in your brain. You have to come back in three months. So... I came back in three months. He said, you have this thing called Carnivious Malformation. And I said, what is that? He goes, it's basically like a brain stem. It's like a cherry stem in your brain and it's brain hemorrhaging. And he goes, have you ever had any of this seizures before? I said, no. And then I started thinking about it. I was like, you know, I was doing a movie and I ended up in the hospital. And, and the last thing that they thought was like, let's check his brain. Let's give him an MRI. They're like, oh, he's dehydrated. I used to have these panic attacks growing up, even when I was playing soccer. So that was, I was born with this thing. So anyway, make a long story short. He said, what do you want to do? And I said, well, what do you mean? What are my options? He goes, you can either continue to take Keppra for the rest of your life, or you can get the brain surgery. And I was like, well, what would you do? He goes, get the brain surgery. So I literally had brain surgery. They went through here. Oh my God. My head. And then I was in a hospital for about a month. I called my agent at the time. I was doing really well. I tested for several shows and I was like, you know what? I want to take a year off. And she's like, what do you mean? I said, I just had this traumatic thing happen to me and it's opened up a lot of stuff. A lot of it opened up my eyes. I want to see what. So I've always loved writing and producing. I've always been, a, I've always enjoyed love storytelling and I wanted to be behind the scenes. So I did this mini series with this actor, Brian Bloom, who's now a writer. Um, and we wrote this movie together. We were about to, uh, we were about to go into production um, right before this pandemic happened, um, called Hack, based on a true story that happened to my buddy that was an editor in New York. He had his cell phone stolen, and somebody basically took his persona and, and ran with it. So we have this movie. We have, we have, we basically have, we have the production team ready to go. As soon as this thing's over, um, hopefully we're going to get back and running. And then, Timothy, I was in Spain last year because I wrote this movie based in the 1920s. It's kind of like Babel, about a matador, but it's not about a matador. And so I went with a director to go do research. And so we did that. So I've been working on that. Now I'm working on a horror movie that I'm writing. So I'm dedicating a lot of time to that right now. Um, I'm starting to get the edge for acting again, but I wanted to really step away from it to see if it's something that really, and I'm starting to miss it. Um, so, but I'm really focusing on trying to get these movies placed and off their feet and finishing the script now called The House on Albany Lane. It's a true story. Um, well, I know some actors. You know some actors? <laughs> I know some actors. So I'm kind of focusing on that, trying to see, you know, where if I'm going to just keep the hitting those bullets, see if something sticks. And then uh, I'll definitely go back to acting. I'll probably just... And are you, feeling, are you feeling fine from that surgery? Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. I mean, I was literally... It was so interesting because... You know, my, my mom was here at the time and my girlfriend at the time really took care of me. But literally for three months, I mean, I was in bed for a month and the doctor said, you're literally going to be like a child. It's your brain trying to recompute itself. So if you if you can't go to sleep, don't fight it. If you wake up at three o'clock in the morning and you see Bart Simpson smoking a joint, he's like, it's totally normal, which I did. 
Um, I would just wake up and see has, crazy yeah. visions. And <laughs> until until I just kind of just woke up one day and I was like, I'm done with this. And then Diego, was, when did that happen? Uh, Sorry, Diego, what year did that happen? How how long ago? It was two and a half years ago. I mean, wow. it was super recent. Wow. Yeah, but it was definitely You're back. Like, it was definitely a life awakening. I mean, like, you know, I'm so I've always been so healthy. I was playing soccer the, the night before in the league. I kept missing the ball. And then all of a sudden the next day, you're like, wait, what? Brain surgery? Me? How is that possible? So, yeah, I mean, I was a That's crazy that I had somebody by my side at the time. Or who knows? I mean, who knows? Right. Well, you're and, back. And Joe, yeah, and healthy. That's what's important. Yes, thank you. Joe, Joe, tell us about the movie that you wrote and produ well, are producing and, well, um, and, and the musical that you're writing. I want to hear about the musical. Well, um, all right, all right. So um, while well, I was on tour, <laughs> with, um, I was on tour with the Bronx Tale. Um, I missed you. I know, dude. What happened? I Dahlia came. I know. I, I don't know. We, we just missed each other for some reason. Anyway, I know. I'm sorry. Um, and uh, so, you know, you're on tour. You. It, there's a lot of time during the day. You're in some hotel room in some random city all over the country. And uh, so I, I became aware of this true story um, um, about a, a Cuban boy um, whose father was, was involved in the, um, in the, uh, in the revolution in, in 1959. And, um, and the things that he went through, and I, I became aware of the story, and it was a fascinating story. And the kid was so ridiculously courageous and bold and stood up for what he he believed in. Um, he took. He, he he did some things. I don't know how a, a child could could have stood up to um, to the <laughs> to a communist dictator the way this kid did. It's an amazing story. So I became aware of it and I started you know using the tour to do all this research and I just read and read and read all these books and looked watched documentaries and uh, we came back and during the pandemic it was great because I uh, no it wasn't great but I used that time to uh, put the script together so. Um, I have a producing partner now, and um, and uh, I've actually made uh, the the connection with the actual real life person who's uh, um, very accomplished, and uh, so we became very close. So we're you know we're setting that thing in motion now. So the script is ready, and uh, and um, hopefully we get some paperwork, legal stuff signed off on, and um, we're off. No, exactly. Yeah, cool. no, 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 oh, thanks, man. We'll, we'll see, you know like. Keep your fingers crossed. It's it's a yeah, mountain. These things are mountains to climb, as you guys oh, all. God, I know. How, we've been trying to get. It, it's a mountain to climb. Right? Uh, the musical is actually a a big movie um, that was also a, a based on a true story. And <clears throat> the real life person came to my son's high school um, and made a speech. And we were talking, and he's like, "What do you do?" And I said, "I do this Broadway show with the you know Chaz Palminteri and Robert De Niro." And he's like, "Oh, I want to make a movie about. I want to make a musical about my. I want to make a Broadway musical about my story." And I'm like. Please, it's been done so many times. <laughs> They're like that. And I, I really tried to discourage him. And this guy, it, it, and I don't want to say it yet because until it's ready, but if you if you knew the person, you would not be surprised that he's not easily discouraged. In fact, he's not discouraged at all. Um, and no, I don't want to make a movie about, about the same story that's, that's in the, or make a musical about the movie. I want to make a musical about making the movie. And I'm like, that's not going to work. The guy went up and gave his speech about how the movie got made. And I, I'm texting him in the middle of it because he gave me his number. I'm like, all right, I'm in, you know. So um, I actually got a guy who um, who's in uh, Rascal Flats. who's a friend of mine. And uh, we've talked about uh, – and so we all met together. And um, hopefully that comes together. So we'll see um, if he can write the book. If I can do the book and we'll see what happens. Awesome. To be honest with you, do you guys feel – I mean, I don't know. I know a lot of actors in our sort of age range that are – Hell bent and committed to, to acting, and I'm at the point where I feel wow. like you just I feel like you're a, you're a pawn, you know. Yeah. You you just you're saying what somebody tells you to say. You're staying where they tell you to stay. You don't really have any decision making abilities. Nope. I'm tired of not making decisions. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, I agree with you a thousand percent, man. I could go and audition for a, a, a primetime show. I'm sorry. I hope no casting directors are listening. But like, really, I'm gonna go do a gig on that and last a week, and so what? You know, it. it and there's like 25 million. guys. There's like 25 right. guys it, up for a guest star. You're like, what? Yeah, and even if you got it, D, what's the, I, I mean, know, what is deal. It? It pay, yeah. 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 I, I started directing about 15 years ago, and that's what I do now, pretty much. I mean, I also sell real estate, but I, I get so much more out of it. For one thing, it's so much more 
interesting and creative. You start with a story and you're, you're the one driving the whole thing. Yeah. And I right. feel like, and I'm helping these people, these actors. Right. I'm helping them be better and be better, okay. you know, take, be, you know, feel better about themselves. And mm -hmm. I do a lot of like community theater, so it's not like these people are going to be stars. But I just, I, I'm, I'm bringing these stories to life. I just like, I like the feeling I have more than the acting. Even though I do some acting, and you know, it to be on stage and to do creative and be a part is a different thing. But I don't know. I think it's a more fulfilling. And I think what you're saying is the control aspect at our age. It's like, yes. I, don't I want people telling me what to do. I, I want exactly. to feel like I'm helping others a little bit more too. Right. Yeah. Mm. You are. You are. Yeah. Hey, everybody yeah. smile. I'm going to take a picture and send it to you all. Oh. All right. Smile. This was so nice. <laughs> Thanks for doing this, everybody. Um, let me yes. check the picture, make sure everybody looks good. And then, yep. Thank Listen, you, I don't, know, I don't know if Diego and or Mark or, or Tim want to, you know, uh, you know, want me to have their number, but I'd like to stay in touch with I Alex. Said, I sent you my number. Hit, I sent, I sent it to you. Oh, I didn't even see that. <laughs> I sent it to you. You got it. Yes. Um, well, yeah. Here. Yeah, Mark, 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 Mark and Tim, were you going to do a skit? I thought you were going to do a skit. Yeah, Somebody are you guys going to do a skit? No. Uh, I, somebody, I, we that's what I heard. Somebody told me they were going to do a skit today. Yeah, Mark. I thought you were going to do something. I skit. I, I I no no. I'm not gonna do a skit. Come on, I, do a I, skit, I, Tim. Funny, I I thought for a second you said, "Are you wearing a skirt?" <laughs> I, there's a you better can't. chance of me wearing a skirt than doing a skit. Right. <laughs> one one okay. thing I want to say is, uh, Tim, uh, yes. you're you're very and everybody. Uh, Mindy sends her love. Yeah. She reached out to uh, me the other day, and she was uh, wanting to let everybody know how much she misses everyone and uh, sends her love. Oh, Mindy, oh, Mindy. Mindy. I need to get Mindy's I'm number. In. I had it, and I lost it. I'll, I'll and send I, it and I, I, I couldn't reach her, and I need to try and reach her. Okay. Yeah, she wants I'll, to reach I'll, you, too. <laughs> I'll send you her number. And uh, my, my last question I'll ask, I've yes, been asking please, everybody, what what's... Um, the one thing you've learned about yourself during this pandemic that you didn't know before, mm. Dahlia? I have to think on that. that, that. Okay, yeah. Let me just no? take a moment. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I have to think. Allison has something. I She's jumping like in. I got it in March. So I was the fifth person in my county to get it. I got it. I must have gotten it before um, lockdown. My first symptom was the 18th. And that was, it was, I ended up writing a story for our local paper, basically telling about my experience. It was like when no, nobody knew anything. I'm reading about, you know, when I was sick, I'm reading about, oh, oh, maybe I don't have any sense of smell or taste. Oh, that's what that is. Anyway, it was very weird. Um, but I feel like I've, I think since then, I've been really trying to tell people to take it seriously. I didn't get horribly sick. I just, I knew there was something, it was very different for me. I had vertigo and crazy lethargy and I definitely knew, I was like, this is probably it. But um, but I just, I, I got really nervous about people who are not, you know, not 100% and not fit. And I was like, you gotta take this seriously. Cause I was like, I didn't want to get out of bed. I, I can't even remember not wanting to get out of bed for five days. And, you know, I just, I run marathons. Like, I'm like, I couldn't, it was very weird. Um, but anyway, I just, I, I think it's just been really, I think for me, it's been really hard to see the division and to see how some people just don't seem to care and like just about others. It's like, no, I'm actually, my biggest fear, I was supposed to open a show that week. We had to, I had to make the decision of the show because I didn't want to be the one responsible for somebody getting sick. And I just felt, I feel like. That's been my big thing. Like, please just do it. Like, think about the other people around you, and um, and you never know if you're going to get it really badly. But um, I don't know. I, I've been just really trying to reach out to people. Anybody who's had it, or and just trying to, you know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. it's a scary time. Well, I'm, gl I'm glad you're feeling better, yeah. Mark. Uh, I'm. A, can you hear me? Is that my thing? Yeah. Uh, you can hear me. Okay. Um, I'm uh, kind of a man of a, few, of a few words. I can say that acting taught me humility, humility, and uh, 
horrible pandemic has taught me patience. It's been uh, quite difficult for a person of my personality um, to withstand this trial. Mm -hmm. But patience. Yeah. Yeah. Tim? Well, um, it, uh, you know, the, acknowledging that, uh, you know, Dahlia lost her father to this, this pandemic and oh, Allison yeah. had to suffer through uh, being sick. And I haven't felt either one of those things. So I, I I'd have to say it's reminded me how fortunate uh, I, I am to have a healthy family and to be healthy myself now at this moment uh and uh it's reminded me of how uh if you can just stay present uh during each day and um keep your mind at, on on what you're experiencing at the moment you've 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 uh probably done uh, the most with with your with your day that you should or could do and i i also has taught me that i'm not nearly as good at uh anything being taught in third grade as i should be <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. That's God bless all the parents who are having to do that, really. <laughs> that is another level of um you know, dedication and just parenting and all of that. But Diego, for you. You know, I, can you guys hear me okay? Kind of. <laughs> I think can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys are freezing up. You're yeah, we can. Okay. I, I think after this, you know, this thing that I had with my brain, I think I, I, when I when I. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. I'll jump in. There, Alan, you know. Yeah. A couple of things that came to my mind afterwards. Um, I think. I think overall. Uh, the most enlightening thing is, is how time is very precious. Mm. And, and I feel like, you know, I, I have three kids and, um, and we think about their, you know, their experience and their grades and, and what they, some of the things that they missed because of this and some of the things that they did get to experience. I mean, the closeness that we, you know, that, that we've been able to have with each other, the, the five of us, you know, because um, for, for, not, you know, from them not being able to go out and do the things that they normally do, but there's there's a silver lining in that. But the fact, the fact is, like a year has gone by, and it's another year of our lives. And maybe at this stage, we go, God, how many more of those? You know, not to be morbid, but you know what I'm saying. Like life is precious, and time is short. And and I think I think that's what you know. That's what we have to remember. I mean, my, my you know, uh, diet. Your, your dad will still be in our prayers, and, and as you will, and with your whole family. Thank um, you, Tim. Uh, um, uh, Nick Nick Cordero. Um, he, he, you know, everybody heard about Nick, um, and he was a, a good friend of mine. Um, we did we did go sail together, um, and uh, you know, to, to see what happened to him, um, you know, reminds all of us that life is you know it's no guarantee. We think we're all going to be here till we're ninety years old, but it's no guarantee. It it can go in a heartbeat, and um, yeah. And uh, so I, I think just an appreciation for every day and uh, and mm -hmm. trying to make the most out of it because, you know, we feel like a lot of time has been lost here. So. Yeah, that's well said. Yeah. Dahlia? Really along the same lines of what everyone said, especially Tim and Joe, appreciation and precious. Uh, we have to really take one day at a time. And what I'm really trying to learn to do is Let's try to be happy and kind, you know? You know, we forget to feel we have a right to be happy. We can choose to be happy. Time is short. And yeah. we we really have to love our friends and our family. And, and I can't wait to hug people. I mean, that's all I want to do. I mean, I've I've hugged people that, you know, I know that I've socially <laughs> disagreed and Mark I know- Mark's got his arms out. Mark's yeah. Arms out. I, that, you know me, I'm the, I'm the hugger in the room. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, everybody. I mean, if-, if when this is all over, I think it's going to be, it's oh, going to be yeah. very powerful to, I to, agree. Be, to be with yeah. the people we love again and even, even be open to new friendships and new, just new energy. And we're going to want to do everything. I think, I mean, this is really changed in our lives. So yeah. one day at a time, we'll get there. Life changing. That's a, that's a great. And Diego, you, we, you cut out. So if you can, 
sorry. I think for me, you know, having this thing happen to me, I think it was life changing from then. Certainly after this pandemic, um, after watching how how people's lives were affected, lost out of their jobs, and then you realize how fortunate us that we that how how fortunate we have it. Um, it kind of makes you not take things for granted and worry about the little petty stuff that you worry about day in day out. Because at the end of the day, it's all about your loved ones. You can be here any second, and then you're gone. Um, I've I've experienced that firsthand. I'm so sorry to hear about your father, Dolly. And my father, as you know, he mm-hmm. passed too years ago. But it was like he was here and he was there. Um, and it's like you know, after this day with my brain, it was like I could have been me. It could have been anybody. I've seen. I know a lot of friends and families who have passed from this horrible disease, uh, this pandemic. So it's like you know, it's just life changing. It it changes people, hopefully for the better. Um, so I'm so happy to see all you guys. It's well, well that, like that, that is a great yeah, hope, hope, Diego. Um, Hopefully it changes everybody for the better. I absolutely. agree. That is, that yeah, is a great way. To, that is a great way to end today. I, I had a blast, friends. guys. I hope you did too. Alan, thank you oh, so much. For all of this oh, thank you, everybody who's watching. Touch. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, oh. The, Hi, the, the fans love seeing Diego. you all. They, Send me your keys. Stay healthy, everybody. Yes. Thank, Thank you, Alan. Right You're there, so there. welcome. You're All the so best, Mark. Bye, guys. Bye, Mark. Guys. Great to see you. Bye, Bye. 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 Love you, Joe. We'll stay up. Bye, Bye. 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 Alan, thank you. Bye, Diego. You're so welcome. Am I fine? All right. Stay safe. Bye. Thanks, everybody. I hope you had a great time today with everybody from Bay City. Thanks, Dahlia, Diego, Mark, Tim, Joe. Have a great night, everybody. And Allison. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Here we go.